Today, I am very excited to be speaking to Representative Young Kim of California's 39th Congressional District. Representative Kim serves on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, House Committee on Small Business, and House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. She has also been named the co-chair of the App Challenge for the 117th Congress. Welcome, Representative Kim. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me. So with that, let's get right into the questions. The Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in computer science and STEM. So why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Well, first of all, the App Challenge is a fun and innovative way for middle school and high school students to learn coding and computer science concepts that will help create opportunities for them as they continue through schools and into their careers. Uh, STEM education, which I'm a big proponent of for many years, is the uh, bridge to job creation, good paying jobs, economic growth, and the US leadership in uh, global competitiveness. So I truly believe that STEM education can help uh, provide great skills for technical career development. So having the skills needed to fill the jobs and solve the big problems is more important than ever as we recover from COVID-19 pandemic. Great. And along those lines, how do you encourage students within your district to take part in the challenge? You know, we've been talking to school districts um, my staff and I have been very active in getting out to all of the 13 cities in my 39 congressional district and letting people know about this congressional app challenge. And we've been posting on our social media um, very actively on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and through my uh, weekly uh, e-newsletters. And I encourage you and everyone watching to follow me at rep young Kim. Uh, now that California is starting to reopen, I think we can host some in-person events once school starts as well. So I'm really looking forward to this. And this is your first time hosting the App Challenge. So what are you most excited for? You know, I've had some uh, other congressional art contests and a few other events through my office. And this one, I'm really excited because uh, this is new and this is exciting for a lot of students. So uh, we're getting a lot of good, good feedback. So I'm really excited to see all these submissions and hear the stories behind the students' applications. And I really have a feeling that we'll have a very, very tough time picking just one winner from the 39th district. We have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. Do you have any advice for students who are interested in the challenge? Um, you know, I really want to make sure the uh, students know that they should um, still enter, even if they've never coded before. In fact, uh, you may know nearly half of last year's participants um, said the uh, challenge was their first time coding. Yeah. And I encourage all students to visit congressionalappchallenge.us to learn more and submit your applications uh, by uh, November 1st. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, the deadline. And you can also um, go to my website, uh, you know, uh, Rep Young Kim, or just go to the website and just get more detailed information. Great. Uh, this is the seventh year we're hosting the App Challenge in the United States. What do you think are the long-term benefits of hosting such a challenge? Um, in our country is? Um, I think long-term benefit is that as the uh, app challenge continues, uh, more people will find out about it and it will become more known all across communities and local school districts throughout the United States. The app challenge um, is really a fun opportunity for students and it will also have long-term benefits of allowing our future workforce to learn uh, coding skills 
and think about ways to use technology to improve our lives. Um, I remember when I served in the California State Assembly, I've had um, you know, young students come to Sacramento and we hosted a one session where the students will show the coding process uh, where the, uh, the legislators were watching. So I think this is gonna be really fun and it will be a win-win. Now, as a member of the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, what do you believe to be the greatest issue facing the tech industry today? And do you have any plans to work on expanding computer science education or tech equity as a whole? You know, uh, in addition to serving on Science, Space, and Technology Committee, I also serve on Small Business Committee and Foreign Affairs. Um, I'm, I also serve as a ranking member on the Small Business Committee's uh, Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Workforce Development. And we recently had a uh, congressional hearing uh, where we heard from uh, folks that uh, as we recover from COVID-19, businesses are looking to fill jobs, but they're also looking for people with the right skills to fill those open jobs. And so learning the STEM skills will make someone applying for a job much more marketable and more competitive to companies. And this will only become more evident as uh, we adapt newer technologies that require technical knowledge and experience. And that's why I've been committed to uh, supporting STEM opportunity for students, all backgrounds. You know that I uh, introduced the um, innovations in uh, informer le uh, STEM learning opportunities. And so I really hope that through that, uh, we can encourage more people to get interested in uh, STEM education. And in California's 39th district, for example, it's home to minority serving institutions. So I'm working on the um, science committee to support our local universities that provide opportunities for all students to succeed. Awesome. And you have just been named co-chair of the Congressional App Challenge. That's very exciting. Um, what are you most excited for within your new role? You know, um, I'm more excited about the opportunity to use my voice in my op uh, office to, you know, to promote about this uh, the very program. And uh, for someone as an immigrant girl who came from uh, you know, South Korea a long time ago, probably way before you guys were born, um, I know I'm sitting here as a member of Congress um, you know, because of the opportunities that were given to me. I feel like I've had a successful career. I ran my own business. I have four children, they're all grown up, but uh, because of the education that I was able to get here in the United States, I, I am able to do what I do today. So I am very excited um, to be able to uh, be an example and hopefully serve as a role model to some of the folks and for you. And I'm really excited to serve as a uh, co-chair of the uh, Congressional App Challenge. And I really look forward to using my voice uh, and be an advocate to continue to promote the importance of educational opportunities with coding and computer science and related fields. Mm -hmm. So is there a piece of technology that you can't live without? I think I speak for uh, everyone here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we definitely cannot live without any uh, force, you know, cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it controls our lives now. But uh, I, uh, on the phones, I am very grateful for um, various apps that's available. But especially for me as a Korean American, we use Kakao Talk app. Uh, it allows me to connect with my family around the country and around the world. It's a free app. It allows free international calls too. So for someone who's been just uh, traveling and came back from overseas, uh, it's been a life scent. Uh, I mean, it's been a lifeline for me to stay <laughs> connected. And we all saw during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic how vital technology was in allowing us to simply connect with others. So I'm very, very grateful 
And another app that I frequently use is the Samsung Health app that <laughs> uh, tracks my daily steps, as well as the street, uh, stretching exercise. I don't know if you have that, but I've downloaded it. And then, um, you know, once in a while, uh, since we work uh, long hours and these days when you do uh, virtual uh, committee hearings, um, you are really stuck in one place. So I try to take the time and I do a lot of stretching exercise and uh, those apps are <laughs> you know, great for me. And one other thing that I can live without is obviously coffee maker because I drink coffee like 24 <laughs> seven, literally. Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. Um, for our students and viewers, the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live so students can register and submit their apps now until November 1st. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.